Hi, everyone. This is Maria Fekes, Executive Director of Adonis Fertility International, and I am so excited to be here with you with um, our next biweekly uh, webinar. Uh, today, we have two phenomenal guests. I was actually promising you one, but one more guest also appeared. She's also phenomenal. So, but the main guest is Michelle. Michelle, say hi to everyone. Hello. <laughs> it's so nice to have you here. So Michelle is this incredible um, surrogate mom who already went through the journey and already came to success. And today she will be sharing some of her experience. And um, guys, I'm always so excited because typically don't have access to um, surrogate mothers, also called gestational carriers, because of the privacy reasons. Many ladies, they really, uh, I mean, they're proud of the work that they're doing but they want to keep the journey private or also families want to keep the journey private, you know, so um, it's really um, difficult to get someone so open like Michelle, who is saying, yes, you know, take photos of me, you know, show my face. Um, so I want to take this opportunity for you to really, um, you know, hear her side of the story and be able to ask questions. And I also have with me here, um, Christy. Hi, Christy. Hi, good morning. Good morning. So Chris is actually one of the members of Adonis Fertility International, but she is here in um, United States or on um, uh, U.S. surrogacy side for us. And the reason she also joined because she uh, part of her role is she's interviewing, she's doing a lot of the pre-qualification interviews with the surrogate mothers. Okay. So I thought it was so uh, exciting also to get her perspective because she sees, you know, the ladies um, that are interested to become surrogates, right? Or the type of questions they're asking. So I, I would uh, be happy to also gain some of her perspective. All right. Without any ado, let's jump in. Okay. So Michelle, um, share just with us, you know, and you look, you look so young, yes, and you are young, and it's someone, you know, like typically, you know, you know, people at this age, right, they're like, well, I don't even know what I want to do, but you were so committed, you know, you have your own incredible family, you are so like goal oriented, and you have incredible drive, but you also had this drive to be a surrogate, why, like, how did this idea even come into your mind? How did it come into my mind? Well, I mean, I really loved being pregnant. Um, but at the time we had our second child about, she's about five now. Um, it was around when she was about two was when I thought about maybe having another one. Cause that's when that itch starts happening. But my husband was, was done and I had to accept that, you know, and so once I accepted that we weren't going to have any more kids of my own or our own, I should say, um, I knew surrogacy was going to just be the perfect thing for me to, to do to kind of like fill that void um, of pretty much just pregnancy. Part of it was like, do I just miss being pregnant? Do I really want another kid or do I just want to be pregnant again? Because it's just, it's such a fun, cool experience that is really just so special that I think a lot of women don't really like think about like how incredible pregnancy is sometimes you kind of take it not for granted but just we don't always think how amazing it really is um but yeah so I just knew that it was that was gonna be it so um yeah, I got to have all of the good benefits and the good feels of being pregnant without the stress of, well, having another kid and not to mention I'm growing a life that I know is going to be extremely wanted and will be loved. And it was pretty much a no brainer for me. Um, it was definitely a really cool experience, super unique, like not many people one have heard of have surrogacy. Um, and a lot of people have still a lot of questions as to how it really works, um, biologically mm -hmm. speaking, you know, once people found out of what I was going into, a lot of, a lot of people thought like I was giving away my own baby and how could I like do that? And it was just a lot of, a lot of ignorance was going into it, but it was nice because me living it and going through it, I was also able to educate people that that's not really how it goes mm -hmm. <laughs> um so yeah it was 
it was definitely, I made the right choice. It was really, it was life altering. It definitely put me on a new path in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what life is all about is just changing different directions and growing. So, and it definitely helped me grow. I oh would. my God. Like, you know, from the first moment I met you and, and then, you know, now you're also part of our team because you, like you said, you're so excited to, um, you know, break the stigma and some of the ignorance and, you know, yeah. share the story. I don't know, like from the moment I first heard you, I just continue smiling. Um, so you said, you know, you thought that the surrogacy is a right thing for you. Like, how did you even, and, and at the same moment, you also shared that many people up to now even though surrogacy already existed for quite a few years yes yeah. uh still many misconceptions so when was the first time you learned about like that surrogacy is even an option because you know like when christy and i were talking we said like when we were your age we had no idea that anything like that exists yeah. right like yeah i don't know how i mean i you know it ex i guess i knew it existed um and I first had thought about doing it like, like when my daughter was like two. So that was like three years ago. And it was in my head to like, oh, like that would have been cool. But it is, it, it is such a big deal. And it, it's, and it's, in, it's a commitment that you really have to digest. Mm -hmm. And so when I had looked into surrogacy, for some reason, I had thought that I was too old to do it. Here we go. Not being educated. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I was too old. And so I kind of like wiped it away. Like, I guess like that's not an option of, of something for me to do. And, um, and then, so I guess like two years ago now, I don't even know, like a year and a half ago, I guess less than two years. Um, my sister, had told me that one of her clients, she's a massage therapist. One of her clients was going to go pick up her baby and from surrogacy and all of that. And I was like, Oh man, like that's so cool. Cause that was something I thought about doing. And she, um, told me, and it was such a long time ago. It feels like a long time ago. And it was such a small, simple little phone call. Um, but she kind of just reignited it in my head um, about surrogacy because she was telling me about her client who just picked up her baby. And so I went and I um, looked into surrogacy again. And then somehow I found out I wasn't too old. And then right away from there, I started doing more research um, on it as to how you kind of pick an agency and all of that and you really have to kind of I think every agency is different for you you know it depends mm -hmm. on who fits um and and then I, I filled out an application that very later that night and that was that was it um, because I just I it was something that I really wanted to do I thought I couldn't as soon as I found out I could <laughs> <laughs> I jumped on it um because yeah I just I really love I love being pregnant so much <laughs> so much um yeah I don't know <laughs> it's, it's so beautiful so like don't even try to find the right words because you are perfect just the way you are so yes um, okay, so you kind of start talking a little bit about the process, maybe, you know, just like high level, just in case anyone is, you know, for the first time hearing about surrogacy, uh, how did the process look like, like from your side of view, like what may be some key milestones? Um, the very beginning, it's a lot of emails, um, emails and transferring of information and, and documents, um, building your profile and all of that and just seeing making sure you're qualified kind of like how what we're doing mm -hmm. um right now with the pre-qualifications um what was the question I am so sorry no what no no don't worry um yeah so what are some key milestones so yeah you said you know first milestones. like well 
first you, right. know, you make a decision and you jumped on it actually yeah. before that it was i think a rule is not only for surrogates right um also called gestational carriers but for intended parents as well don't make assumptions i find it so many times where you know it's just sometimes we think that not something is not available to us or we're not good enough. Like you, you thinking that you were old as a surrogate. I have so many families that are saying, am I too old to have a dream of a baby? Okay. Yeah. So guys, please, mm -hmm. please, please don't look around. Don't let anyone decide for you what's important for you. Mm -hmm. um, and don't make assumptions, right? You know, ask questions, go through, you know, diagnostics, questionnaire, whatever it is. Then you said the next step was, you know, filling out a lot of information goes through pre-qualification process. Yeah. Once pre-qualification has been done, you know, they also knew your like compensation requirements and things like that. What's next? Was it matching or? Yep. Yeah. So once, um, once we had made a profile um, of my information and some pictures and we have a profile of myself from there, um, it was matching that's when we were ready to match and how it worked for me was that I was sent the intended parents profile first and if I had read and I was like you know what they sound like really a good fit for me I would like give them the green flag if they and then they would see my profile so oh. the intended parents are never going to be shown someone who's not really interested. So I see the, the intended first. And then if I say yes, then they will see my profile. If I say no, not really, then they're not even going to see me at all in the from they're not going to be presented with my profile at all. Um, I, I matched with my very first uh, parent parent profile. Um, and then from there, um, we set up a video call and we um, met and we fit right away. They reminded Aww. me so much of my husband that I was just <laughs> like, this is why I like you so much. Um, and then, but they were so great because it was just me and because of work scheduling, my husband wasn't there on the call with me. So they were like, if you want us to meet your husband before we like, officially say like let's move forward or not like let's do that um and so we did and it was really great and so we all really got along really well mm. um, after matching and all of that and saying yes that took about like a month or two before officially um matching and then from there I believe it was, we, we moved, it was kind of like then, then from there, we set up the medical screening mm -hmm. um, at the clinic um, with the, with the saline ultrasound and all of that um, to make sure my uterine lining was okay, okay, not full of polyps or anything like that. And if they were to address them. Um, so after that, then it was also, once I was approved or passed the, that screening, then we moved on to medical or not medical, I'm sorry, le the legal process. So we contacted, mm -hmm. um, lawyers. I got my lawyer from the agency that they had recommended. So I didn't have to like go searching and digging for one or anything like that. Um, and so they helped me figure out the things that were really important to me that I really wanted to make sure I was represented and I was safe and I had, I didn't have anything handcuffed to me that I didn't really want to happen. Um, I wanted to make sure I maintained my active lifestyle. Um, I didn't want, as we have um, assumptions as to how this might work, I didn't want anyone telling me what I can and cannot eat. Like I wanted, I didn't want anyone helicoptering over me in my pregnancy. I've had two healthy children already. I know how to do this. Like I wanted to still have my freedoms of being a pregnant woman without anyone kind of telling me what to do. And, and my lawyer really- as Well, I think what you are saying, you know, and, and we will come back to that. So it's not just, you know, that helicopter and everyone has best intention, but like you were saying, right. I wanted someone to know me and trust me that I'm going to, 
you know, do the very best decisions, right? Based on mm -hmm. my experience, based on what doctors are assigning. Right. And right. what's the best, but yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, so we, I had made sure all of that was set and we passed back and forth our contracts. Um, so, so both of me and my parents were both getting, you know, the negotiations down, which really only took maybe three passes for us before signing it off. But a lot of that, um, like what I'm told just in the group in general is that a lot of this early stage stuff is a lot of hurry up and wait. So it was like, hurry up, get all your documents, hurry up, get all of your screenings done, match. And then it kind of like goes into a standstill with like the legal documentations getting processed and all of that. So, and it just drives you crazy because you're yeah, so- Yeah, but you're ready to go. You're like, okay. Yeah, you're Let's like so it. excited, but then, and then it's just like kind of silent for a little bit. Um, it wasn't really recommended to talk to my IPs um, until the legal contract was signed. Mm -hmm. So, because we they didn't want to have any awkwardness of anything kind of- was getting a little combative in, in the legal process, I'm assuming. Um, but my IPs asked for my contact information, like kind of during that, just because we were so excited. Um, so after the legal process was done and set, then that's more waiting just because then you have to go start your medications, but then you also have to like match up with your own uh, like your own menstrual cycle. So you have, if you had already started it, like now you have to wait a whole other month till it comes back. <laughs> so that took a long time. You, I had, I don't think I've ever been so excited to get my period before um, to start <laughs> medications. And then, so once that went on, um, then you started the injections and all of that. And that the clinic had was really informative with, um, you, and helpful with, I'm not one for needles at all. Mm -hmm. Um, my husband had to do all the needles, even the little tiny Lupron injections, like that go into your belly, like that you don't feel, no, I couldn't do it. My husband had to do that for me. Um, so all of that, and then we set up our transfer day, but also there's a lot, um, a lot of ultrasounds in between those times during the injections to make sure your lining is thickening and um, ready to hold on to a little embryo. So there's a lot of, a lot of appointments every single week during that, like two months, I think, before your transfer even. So that was a lot of, you know, a, a lot of juggling and just making sure you're available. So that's kind of goes into being a surrogate. You have to make sure you're committed to doing this for somebody and making sure you're being available for what needs to be done. Um, but yeah, and then it was transfer day and it was, I was nervous and you didn't feel a thing. You didn't feel a thing. <laughs> Oh my God. After all the shots and all the needles, you probably like, gosh, like, you know, I would do any transfer. Yeah. 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 My, the doctor who first did my saline ultrasound, um, I would, cause I was like, don't know what, cause they go through your cervix and that sounds horrific. And so I remember her saying, she was like, well, how many kids have you had? And I was like, I had two. And she was like, oh, then this isn't going to like hurt. I guess it might be more uncomfortable for never having kids or minimal or something. I don't know. But she was like, ah. And she's like, you might feel some pressure. Like it might be some discomfort. And I was like, okay. I didn't even feel that catheter go through. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then even, and so it's the same kind of thing when they do the transfer with the catheter through your cervix. And I did not feel a single thing of them doing that. No numbness or, you know, painkiller, no nothing like that. Um, and yeah, it was so, but it was really cool because you got to see it on camera of them putting the embryo into your lining. 
And that was really cool. You just see this little bubble just like come out a little tube and stuff. And that was really cool. Like miracle in making. Yeah. And it was all like, <laughs> oh my God, that's so crazy. How cool is that? And so, yeah. And then we were just, so then you hurried up and you waited again. And then you had to wait for that next week to do a pregnancy test and all of that. And how did you cope um, through that? That's probably so nerve wracking. That's like one of the biggest yes. ads that it's nerve wracking for you. It's nerve wracking for parents. It's like yes. minutes seem you to really take want it to ages. take. Mm-hmm. You really want that confirmation that it took, um, and just and if it didn't, like how I feel like I I'm sure I know a lot of other surrogates when they when it doesn't take, like you feel kind of like a failure, like your body didn't work and it can be devastating. Um, I know a lot of surrogates. That, it's not you know, right. Happen. And it's so important to understand. It's not oh. you. No, right. No. A, a support system is extremely important also at that point too. So not only for your injections, when especially when you need help and understanding with your hormones kind of being knocked around with, and then also like for transfer time, just in case that doesn't take um, it's not just the intended parents that are going to be really down about it. It's going to be the surrogate too. Um, even though it's not their baby, like it's still like, we care so much too. That's why we're doing it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, and so yeah, a strong support system, patient support system is <laughs> incredibly important, um, to be a surrogate for sure. Um, but once, once you have that positive heartbeat and your not your beta numbers are are all just skyrocketing and you're just like you're super pregnant, then like you can just be happy and just enjoy, you know, you can enjoy your morning sickness and you can enjoy your nausea and you can enjoy just everything that goes with it. So I'm sorry. What what is it? Okay. Do you want me to rip it off? Okay, then what do you want? Uh, and this is so sweet well this is part of the work you know every surrogate um must have already child of her own at least one right so um yeah that's why it's so important that they can do they could be a great no 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 they could be a great great support for the family and they could be a great um support for the intended parents as well so christy uh let me ask you a question as you're listening to all of that what are some, some things you're noticing you know like you're already seeing the journey unfold on the other side but as you're talking to some candidates that they're saying gosh like i don't know is it scary is it not like what are some trends you're noticing like what 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 you would love to share with the ladies who are considering you know, I've been really blown away by how giving and caring these people are. Like when I was younger, it never even occurred to me to be a surrogate. And um, and I wish it would have because it's it's such an amazing thing. And every single person that I've spoken to is extremely committed to helping another family have their dream of a baby. And it's just a, it, it's very uplifting to speak to people that care so much about people that they've never met. It's just really cool. Well, thank you so much for saying that. Um, Michelle, so let's pause a little bit on the process. So you got pregnant, now you're breathing. We're going to go, um, we're going to come back, not to the pregnancy observation, but maybe we'll jump right into the delivery, you know, because it's such an oh. intimate moment, you know, we will do that. But let me pause. There is a couple of things that you said that were very important. First of all, talk us through, you said that you were looking, um, like, um, you know, first you were looking at the profile of intended parents. What are some things that were important to you? You know, how did you know it's a good match? That's a really good question. Um, well, I don't know. <laughs> what Okay. Or what could parents share with you? You know what I mean? Like, you know, because as other um, ladies are considering and looking into profiles and, um, and I want to come, I don't want to come across as like, you know, you judging or parents are judging you, you know, it, it needs to be a relationship both ways. Mm -hmm. What's some information that you thought was helpful for you to make a decision, you know? Um, 
I feel like just like the wordage of their profile just kind of felt very similar to me, just personality wise. Um, you know, the way things are written are important. So I just really feel like I connected with just the way it was typed out. Um, they were, they're kind of on the environmental side of their works. So they're kind of just like, these just like, they seem like they were already changing the world kind of people. And they had already had a child through surrogacy as well. Um, and I don't know it. I think written it, a lot of it, they already reminded me of my husband. Like one of them just, you know, does all the cooking. <laughs> I'm like, so does my husband. <laughs> um, so I don't know. It was, um, they just seemed nice. I mean, it, it was, it's hard to say, I think just because they were my own first and only profile I, I viewed if it was the first profile and I read it and I, and something didn't click, I feel like I would be able to tell you why, mm -hmm. um, why I said no, but, um, I just really liked this profile. Um, I really liked just the way they came up, came across. I, there was no specific like, oh, well, they really liked this and they really liked that. Um, I don't know, but it they it did tell me like what they did for a living. It told me that they had a son already. Um and so really you know, you don't know what was on the profile versus after I just spoke to them on a video call. Um but they were both they were so incredibly humble. I that's what I remember on the video call, not the profile as much. On the video call when I met them, they were so humble and just appreciative of even just the time talking to me. Mm -hmm. um, and to where the to the point where like you end up just talking and like you're meeting new friends and you're just like, we can be really good friends. And then we most of the time, not most of the time, but we once we were like, yeah, like this is what I like to do. Like at the time, like. I had my dog. She actually passed away during my journey. And um, and they were like, oh my gosh, we love dogs. Like almost to the point where they, you know, you remember the dog's name and not the owner's name when you meet them at the park or whatever. Like it was kind of like that. And I was, I've been in the dog industry for the past 15 years. So that was a really big kind of, um, connection that we had was just with dogs in general, which I feel like a lot of people, that's a really easy connection to make with someone. Um, cause so many people like dogs. Um, but yeah, so just kind of one, one of the parents was more of the talker and the other one is more of the listener that's very much mirrored into my own relationship with my husband. He is the talker. He is the schmoozer, the charismatic one. <laughs> and the other one is just, we're quiet and like, we'll tune in, we'll chime in when, when we have something to say. And um, I don't know, it was just very mir mirrored as to what I see in my own relationship with my husband. And so you can kind of just see that the connection was just there um you really can't use words with it it's just it's e either it's there or it's not um but for the profile I just I was like they sound nice like I have no reason to say no there was nothing that was off-putting in the profile um for me so mm -hmm. so no, I said yes. <laughs> yeah no this is wonderful and you know there is no right or wrong way I just wanted to hear your perspective but from what I'm hearing you saying like there was a story there was openness um so I think if you intended parents just share who you are and what you believe in because yeah. at the end 
um, even if it's not a good match, that's okay. You want someone, especially when you're doing surrogacy in the United States, yes, where surrogate can make decisions. It's a three ways, you know, relationship between intended parents, surrogate, and medical institution, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Like, like in, uh, you know, surrogacy in Ukraine, for example, surrogate does not have any decision power in the process. In USA, surrogate does have a decision power. So I think it's very important to be transparent on what is important to you. Yes. And at yes. the end, right, instead of pretending to be someone who you're not, because otherwise oh, sure. it, will catch up to you. it will catch up. Absolutely. Like you were saying, you know, the process is so intimate and there is so much trust involved. So it's very important. Right. Um, and another question, um, like you were constantly talking about support, 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 support. Right. And you're saying your husband was a great support. Help me understand two sides. One is how did your whole family got on board? Right. Like, you know, um, you know, your husband, how did you discuss? Because in essence, you had to put your life on yes. hold. Yes. It was very in invasive into your relationship, right? So like, it gives me chills thinking like how supportive, incredible your husband is, right? But no matter if like, you know, surrogate is married or is in a relationship still, it's an impact, right? So mm -hmm. one side about your husband. And second, how did you make a decision um, how to involve your kids, for example, right? Like, you know, right. Again, no right or wrong answer. I just want to hear how did you guys manage because other surrogates, I'm sure, have the same questions as well. So sure. share. Mm -hmm. Can I go back just real quick? Quick. Yeah, a little go. Bit yes. Um, a really big thing that was part. I feel like I filled it out in my application, or maybe it was part of my profile. But we matched on the level that I wanted to kind of. I wanted to keep contact with my parents, with the family. Mm -hmm. Um after delivery um so and I wanted to be I wanted us to kind of just be one big happy group family friends during the whole journey and and for that to continue on after delivery and that was something that we both really wanted and if there was a profile that didn't really want that in that closeness of socializing we probably wouldn't have matched I really went into this um, wanting to kind of extend my family in a way, um, like they are now forever going to be linked to me because that's how I want it. That's how they want it. Um, not everybody views surrogacy that way. Not everybody wants them to be linked or connected. They just want their baby and to go on and move, move and live their life as if, I never existed, you know, so, um, but that's what we wanted. So that was a really, that was a big way is what has, how we matched. Um, I'm so glad you brought it up. So yes, level of communication, but also non-negotiables, right? So there might be some other things that are very important. Yes. Yeah? So yeah. this is such an important point. Um, yes. But back to, to the support oh, system. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, husband I first put out the application and I kind of did it without asking but at the same time he's already so supportive he I mean I filled it out with him right next to me um and he was just like yeah sure like if that's really what you want to do like okay and stuff and he knows how I am pregnant he knows how that kind of goes so he wasn't like I don't know what this is going to be like like um so he was he was supportive and he loves me um when I first shared it I didn't share it and tell anybody in my um outside family just me and my husband knew until we had officially matched with the family. And then I went and I told, um, well, also for my references, I had to reference two people in my application. Um, so I, of course, whenever you put in references, I had to tell them like, hey, just in case they call you, like, <laughs> you know, Not so a job. <laughs> my references knew, um, but I didn't really tell anyone else. So I told my, once I told my parents only after we had matched, um, and my mom was just like, oh my God, she was like, that's so cool. She, and just like you guys, she's like, you know, like I, I thought about doing that, like after I had you 
And I was like, really? Like, I've never heard that from you ever. And she's like, no, yeah, I really thought about it. Um, so she was really supportive and excited about the experience. Um, nobody else was like poo-pooing me. Um, I did have a couple of relatives come and just say like, that's amazing that you're doing it because I hated being pregnant and I couldn't wait to not be pregnant. And I never wanted to be pregnant ever again. Like you're nuts, but good for you. <laughs> So I got a couple of that, um, but also some other, you know, people who were very confused. I feel like my mother-in-law was like, how can you give away your baby? And that was- How was your conception like, again? It's not my baby. It's not your grandchild. Like, <laughs> no. So she needed to be educated. But once they are educated, they it kind of opens up like, oh, that's really cool. Um and my sister was like, that's a really big deal. She had, she has three kids. So she's like tired of kids, but she thought that that was really cool too. So everyone was really supportive um, once I shared the news, but I did keep it quiet. I didn't want to share too much information. Um, I didn't share it. I think I didn't post on, like I'm on Facebook. I didn't post or share milestone like monthly baby bump growth pictures I never I didn't do any of that on my Facebook on my social media I only sent baby bump photos to my IPs yeah for um, more their journey like yeah I I wasn't about baby? to make it on my own I didn't want people thinking I was having a third baby and then for everyone to be like oh my god like that's amazing congratulations and then like asking I didn't want to be bombarded with questions myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I kept it quiet. I only sent pictures to my IPs. Um, nothing has been shared except for this one. It was about how I was like seven months, six or seven months pregnant already. And I took a family photo um, because we were at a quinceanera and that was posted because it was a really nice family photo. And then, but you could see that I was pretty darn pregnant. So from there, that was the first time my social cloud um, found out that I was even pregnant again after like seven months. Nobody knew that I was on medications and the transfer. No, none of that was told. Only the people that I talked to like in person um, and stuff like that who, who just know what's going on with me. Um, and then I also shared at the end of the year, I was about eight, I was going to pop soon. And I usually do an end of the year, like, cause I don't share a lot of stuff on social media. So I usually do like an end of the year. This is how my year went and shared, you know, like my pregnancy photo and and stuff. So that's when everyone knew on my social media, not until the end, just to kind of have a, have all the questions answered kind of a thing in that one single post. Um, but I never shared anything about my IPs. I never shared any pictures of the baby, even though she's so cute. <laughs> and um, yeah, so all of my social media was very private. I never, I acted like I wasn't pregnant on social media. Um but everyone who was in my own little circle, like knew everything that was going on with me and has, was very supportive of it. When I needed my parents to help me, like they helped me just like how they should, as if you're having your own baby, you know, um, even though they're not always around, they travel a lot. Um, what about you? Oh, and let me ask you. So speaking about, because you spent so much, you know, um, and great points about, you know, the privacy of information and the social media, um, great question came up. Was not sharing on social media part of your legal contract? No, it was not. It was not. Okay. No. Okay. So, but it could be a wish. Uh, it could be. I mean, okay. Yeah. I think um, if it's that important for the IPs, um, I would definitely make a note of that either in your profile to just weed them out, um, but then have that concrete in your legal contract for sure. If you really want it to be... Um, off of social media. I will say, I mean, when you're pregnant, you're kind of just, 
pregnant and whether you whether it's like you can share your photos of photos of your body but like don't put my names or tag me or nothing like that like I think that's fine too um I know I didn't when I like posted like my random pictures um even towards the end and I shared my whole story about being surrogate because I was at the end anyways I didn't mention any names or anything like that um I, which I don't even think they're on social media, honestly, because I'm not even friends with them on Facebook. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't think they have them. Um, but important that it's very important, again, you know, as the relationship, you know, develops that, you know, parents, you know what your boundaries are and surrogates, gestational carriers, you yes. guys know as well. And you're very open about those boundaries. Um, tell me a little, yeah. So tell us about how did you share with your kids? So how did you involve? And then, you know, we literally have 15 minutes left. I want to, after the kids question, I want to jump into, yes, you know, the final phase, you know, the delivery, what were some questions were important for you guys that you were discussing between you and yeah. the parents? Um, and then also, um, last question that I want to ask is what about, uh, many you know just like your mom was thinking no not your mom no your uh, your grandma My mom. oh you no 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 i think your grandma said that uh gosh how could you give away your baby right oh, yes i i think that's where also uh many people have you know maybe fears first of all mm -hmm. sort of think well is there is any chance that parents would not accept their baby and i'm going to be stuck with the baby <laughs> and second and but for the families what if you don't give away baby or what feelings you have as you're giving away. Right. You're not even giving away, right? Like, like you said, you don't have relationship, but somehow yeah, it was never yours to give away. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, but yeah, so let, let's, let's do the, um, your family as far as your kids and okay. then two questions about delivery. Um, this was a really cool thing for my kids. Um, we're always very open with um, the way the body works, right? I mean, I have a nine-year-old, so we're about to be starting menstruation in the next couple of years that I'm starting to prepare for. So we're very um, aware of to how it works and what to expect. Um, but it was very much like this isn't, I'm growing a baby for someone else. I'm growing a baby for this other family um, we did video chats with the IP, uh, the parents. Um, so they met my kids. So my kids could see who this baby is going to belong to. Um, so it wasn't just some imaginary, oh, my parents are giving this baby to somebody else. Like, no, these are who they belong to right here in this, on, the, on the screen. Um, so we were very open with that. We met their, um, their son too. Um, so we were all just very aware and like, this isn't like, oh, my mom, like, this is my sister. Absolutely not. We're not doing that. There were some assumptions on the bus um, from the bus driver. She had said like, oh, you're going to be a big sister. And then my, oh, kids, and then kids, my daughter kids, came kids home school. and she was like, am I going to be a big sister? And I'm like, no, who told you that? And she's like, the <laughs> bus, Miss Kylie. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. So I had to tell the bus driver, like, that's, this is what's going on. And she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, but no, so from the very beginning, like my daughter's five, she was like four the whole year, but she just turned five. So like, even so young as that, like she understood, she never really questioned that, that she was going to be a big sister until that happened. But like, it was always my mommy is, this is not our baby. This is for blah, blah, blah. And we're we're just growing it for him so so we Aww, can that's so sweet of them to think this way and, mm -hmm. and thank and, you for creating that positive story for them yeah so it was not um confusing it was not confusing if they did have questions I answered them um I was very blunt with my kids I've always have been so um if they did have if they had medical questions either even because my little one did have to come on a lot of appointments with me awesome um you know so like they saw the ultrasounds too so like they were just very I think it was a really educational experience honestly for my kids mm -hmm. um but no it was great for my kids there was I I didn't do a runaround if you know I feel like maybe a lot of people are wondering when they should tell their kids um I think 
I didn't officially tell them what was going on until my older one. I told her like on my transfer day, we were leaving to go do that. I told her that the doctors are going to go there. Their doctors are going to put a baby in my belly. And then, but I didn't say anything to my little one, my five-year-old until I had like a positive pregnancy test. Okay. Um, because I, because even for them, like, I don't, I didn't want them to get excited for a baby either. Yeah. So I yeah. waited until this was like the real deal. It's in my body. It's, it's going to start changing and I'm going to start acting differently hormonals. And, um, so yeah, it was like about transfer day and positive pregnancy test is when my kids were officially told, like, I'm pregnant. There's a baby mm -hmm. in my belly. It's not for me. <laughs> it's okay. not for us. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. What was the other question? Um, let's jump into delivery. Yes. Oh. So yeah. So not about talking mechanics, but more like maybe what was some of the considerations between you and intended parents? Yes. And let me just call them parents. I hate the word intended. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yes. So between you and the parents, yes. Uh, what was important to you? What was important to them? Where did you guys meet? And oh. then, yes. How did it feel for you when the journey ended? Like you said, it was not a baby for me to give away. No. Like it was like yeah. baby. my so whole journey. Those, yeah, yeah. those two things in any um, order. You know, you could jump into anything. Um, so for my delivery, we had set up with the hospital. So we we each did a the hospital tour. Um, we wanted to do it together, but we ended up having to do it separately. Um, so we did that just like as if it's um, you know, your own. It's just a visit of the hospital. Um, but my agency had already reached out to the hospital explaining who I am, our situation, making sure that there's no surprises or miscommunications of I'm not the mother. Um, don't call me mom. Don't call me like, don't say congratulations, mom, or like, this is your baby. And like, don't, none of that kind of talk was to be going on in the room. Mm -hmm. um, we did have set up um, my delivery room and then the IPs had a room right next door to me. So once the baby was born um, and they they didn't give me the baby at all, I did not hold her in my arms. I know that that's different for everybody. Um, some suros do get to hold their ba the baby. Um, but as soon as she came out and she went into the little incubator thing, like they were both like, I want to adore my baby. She's so precious. But they were also like on the other side, like, thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> like they were kind of torn as to who to really like love and care for because they loved me for doing it so much. Um, so it was really nice. And I didn't feel it didn't feel wrong in any way. Like the my entire journey there was no, like, there was no, this is my baby. I love, I love her so much. I got to spend a lot of great time with her. I got to feel her kicks and her blah, 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 and all of that. I love her. I love everything that I did with her. Um, but when she was with her parents, it was just like a, I'll see you later, bud. Like it wasn't for me, it wasn't sad. It didn't feel strange in any way it was just like like that's where you go now <laughs> I don't know. it wasn't oh I don't know it was I didn't cry I I wasn't sad I was just ah like that's done like mission complete you know and so it was just really great and then they went and they did their skin to skin um in their room and they got to have their time and do all of that newborn stuff. And, um, and then I got to be, you know, taken care of and all that jazz. And, um, I got to just be with my husband at that point until we were able to move to postpartum. Um, but the next day we, um, we're still, so we moved. So you're in the delivery room and then you go move up to the postpartum area our rooms were still next to each other. 
Um, and they were incredibly um, grateful and, you know, so happy. But it's kind of to that point now as to, um, like, I want to see the baby so bad now, like, but I don't want to, like, invade on their time with the baby after I just got to spend, like, nine months with her. So um, it's kind of like that, but I'm also, like, still really tired and, like, just trying to survive and exist. Yeah. Um, so they actually, I think I was still so tired and they were like texting us if they could come, <laughs> they could come in. And I'm just like, I'm no. <laughs> <I'm exhausted. laughs> you you keep your baby for a little bit longer um, <laughs> and stuff. So I, so finally, like, you know, once I am able to walk, my anesthesia was all messed up, but once I was able to get up um, and walk for walk next door, I was able to, you know, have my precious baby hugs and snuggles and all of that. And we took our we took our photos together and um, I got to see her newborn photos being taken, too. And um, yeah. And so then and it was just great. And I wanted to leave as soon as I got to be discharged they were allowed to stay in the hospital for an extra 24 hours, but because I didn't have any complications or anything like that, I got just the base 24 hours and I was like, yes, and I'm out and I go home. Um, but I live 20 minutes away from the hospital. So while they stayed that extra day in the hospital, um, adjusting to newborn life, um, with the help of nurses and all of that, that's why they wanted to stay. So, but once they were, kicked out and discharged they came over to my house and they got to meet my kids um or they got to meet the baby because they already met my kids um and take some pictures with my kids with the baby and all of that and you know give our hugs and and then they went on their way um but we still text you know every once in a while and they send me new pictures of baby and she's getting so big um but yeah, so it's, it was just very, it didn't feel like I lost anything. Mm. Um, I gained another family is essentially oh what I did. So it, it didn't feel weird. It didn't feel like I, it didn't, it wasn't like I wanted to keep her longer. It wasn't like I want, I didn't want to give her, I wanted to give her away because that was my intentions from beginning matching, you know from the application like so right. um and that's how it should be I think for every surrogate um none of I don't think a surrogate should by all means cry and be sad that she's leaving but don't like have that urge to keep her um right. I don't think that's um a good fit for you if it is so Oh, and it should be discussed from the beginning. And that's where psychological right. evaluation comes in place, right? Mm -hmm. Before yeah. you know, match or anything. Yeah, because again, those are such an intimate thoughts and we have to be transparent about them. And if the initial intent is not right, then this journey is not for you. Right. So it was it was really great. And um, I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah, it was great. <laughs> Well, <laughs> huge, huge congratulations we literally like guys two minutes so if anyone has a last minute question or any thought or anything i just want to thank you so much for opening up for being so transparent and so you know thorough and real with your questions uh with your answers you know because um it's so important to hear the to, to see oh. the journey from the other side yes so in delivery, so I know that a lot of people I think might be curious as to when it's delivery labor time and you're in the hospital. Um, I know everybody wants to be so respectful um, as to the privacy and the comfortability of their surrogate when they're in labor because it's such an intimate and hard time. Um, so just make sure I would say like if you don't know how your surrogate wants things to be, and then you're kind of stuck in that situation, just ask. Just ask if you want them to leave the room. If Just ask if she needs some time um, to kind of gather herself again, like even after some big contractions, like just 
if you're not sure if you're uncomfortable and she's in labor and you're like, I really wanted to be here, but now I'm just like, I don't know if I can, like, it's okay. She's not going to notice if you leave anyways, cause she's busy. Um, so that might be something that you're going to want to either talk about before um, delivery day as to how you kind of want to go about the delivery room. Um, we went, my IPs went in and out of the room just for the down times while we're waiting for contractions and all that. They would leave, they would go get food. They would just like um, walk out just so we can kind of recharge our social batteries even. Um, and But we also just sat around in the room and just talking, waiting for labor to really get going. So um, just talk to your surrogate as to how you kind of want that day to go, um, because you're not going to know if you don't ask. Very good. Very important. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I don't see any questions and we're right on top of the hour. Michelle, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for yes. any parents that are considering surrogacy. Please, if you have any questions, let us know we're here to support in any way. And also uh, for amazing angels, gestational carriers, ladies, also, if you have any questions, if you're considering um, if you don't know what maybe non-negotiables to put or what important questions there are, we are here to brainstorm with you. And Michelle is one of the team members that literally, you know, planning with you um, and helping you along the way. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.